We are often fascinated by the high-flying, fast-paced, and precise movement abilities of elite performers. But when you think about it, the movements that we all make every day are quite impressive as well, because they each require an immensely complicated coordination of muscles to achieve. The reason these actions seem simple is that the human brain has evolved to maximize our ability to control voluntary movement. Our brain is so good, in fact, that although there are computers, like IBM's Watson, that can exceed even the greatest of human intellectual capacities, they're still far behind in terms of producing physical action, like pressing the Jeopardy buzzer. Even robots optimized for action still struggle to move as efficiently and smoothly as a child. So what is it that makes our brain so good at controlling goal-directed action? To address this, I first try to understand how the brain represents different types of movement. In general, we know that the left hemisphere of our brain represents the right side of our body, and the right hemisphere represents the left. But how might the brain tell apart two movements made with the same hand, say, right versus left? In my research, I've worked on developing the experimental and analysis tools to be able to answer this question for the first time. Uh, in my research, I started by using the MRI scanner here at UCSB to measure brain activity as participants made all kinds of movements with their right hand. Here's the brain during movement. These bright colors show the areas where there's the most brain activity, on average, specific to moving. Now, this is where a normal analysis might end. But what our new analysis allows us to do is zoom in on one of these active regions and see the specific patterns of brain activity on every trial. In this area, you can see one pattern of activity for movements made to the right and a distinct pattern for movements to the left. With this analysis, I found that while some areas represent the visual or spatial aspects of movement, like locating a cup of coffee, other areas emphasize motor-specific representations, like determining the direction or posture you should use to reach that cup. And some areas represent both. In this way, the brain works together in order to identify where you need to move and how to actually get there. So how can this information actually help? One exciting application that is being worked on in other labs across the country is in neuromotor prosthetics, which aims to help paralyzed patients move again. This patient has an implant that records signals directly from her brain. With a lot of training, she can learn to move this robotic arm by simply thinking about moving. However, Despite these major breakthroughs, there's still a long way to go. By implementing what we now know about these complex movement representations, we can create stronger algorithms and guide the development of more flexible and less invasive devices to restore movement abilities. In essence, we're able to really harness what the brain does best to transform our thought into action. Thank you. <laughs>